Hey everyone, Sam here from Sugar Spun Run, and today I'm showing you how to make an easy homemade vanilla pudding. I've personally never been a huge fan of pudding, but if I'm going to eat it, it needs to be homemade. There is such a difference between making it yourself and those little snack packs you buy at the store or anything that comes out of a box in powder form. Today's vanilla pudding recipe is actually surprisingly simple. It's full of a great, rich vanilla flavor, and I really think you're going to love it. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is grab a medium-sized saucepan, and let's head over to our stovetop. We're going to start by whisking together 3 fourths cup of granulated sugar, 3 tablespoons of cornstarch, and a fourth teaspoon of salt. Next, you'll need to add your milk. You're going to need two cups of whole milk. We'll also be adding a half cup of heavy cream, which adds a nice richness and creaminess to this vanilla pudding. We'll also add two egg yolks. Now, this is just the yolks. You do not want the whites for this recipe. This is another thing that's going to help give our pudding that nice body. It's going to help it thicken up properly. I really love the addition of these egg yolks. You're gonna to want to use your whisk now to stir everything together or whisk everything together. Make sure you get these egg yolks nicely broken up and make sure there are no dry ingredients sitting at the bottom of your pan, not stirred in with the liquid ones. Since this is a vanilla pudding, you have two options for adding vanilla flavor to this recipe. My preference is to use a vanilla bean. If you're using a vanilla bean, you'll wanna split that down the middle and you're just going to toss it into your saucepan right now and stir everything together that way. It's going to cook with the pudding. It's gonna add a lot of great flavor that way. However, I know vanilla beans are super expensive right now, so if you don't have any, don't worry, you can still make this recipe. You're going to need two teaspoons of vanilla extract, but we're not going to add them yet. We're going to reserve those till the end. Today I'm going to be using vanilla extract, so don't worry about adding vanilla just yet. Now turn your stovetop heat to medium and you're going to want to whisk everything together pretty frequently until the mixture begins to thicken. It will take several minutes for your pudding to start to thicken, so if you're getting impatient, do not turn up the heat. It's really important that your sugars melt properly and that you don't cook everything too fast or your pudding just is not going to set up properly. So just look, keep that heat on medium and stir frequently. If you're wondering if your pudding mixture has thickened enough, I like to use the back of a spoon test. Just go ahead and dip your spoon into the pudding and when you pull it out, it should coat the back of the spoon or if you run your finger down there, it should leave a line that doesn't, the pudding won't flow back over that line that you just made with your finger. Now, once your mixture has thickened, you are going to want to start whisking constantly. Just keep whisking this mixture until it comes to a boil. Remember, do not turn your heat up to high just to speed things along or your pudding will not turn out. Now, once your mixture begins to boil, as soon as you start to see bubbles, you're going to want to whisk this constantly for 60 seconds. I recommend using a timer. Once those 60 seconds have passed, you're going to grab your saucepan and remove it from heat. Now, keep whisking it. You don't want anything to burn on the bottom of your pot, so you're gonna to wanna to continue to whisk for a couple more seconds. Now you're going to want to add your butter. You'll need three tablespoons of unsalted butter, and I like to cut this into tablespoon sized pieces. We're going to add these one at a time, whisking until each one is melted and thoroughly combined into the pudding before adding the next. Now, if you used a vanilla bean, you can go ahead and pull that out of your pudding at this point. But if you didn't use a vanilla bean and you opted for vanilla extract as I have, you're going to want to stir that in now. And that is two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Now one tool I recommend anytime you're making pudding is a fine mesh strainer. What we're going to do is we're just going to pour our pudding out of our saucepan and into a heat proof bowl through the strainer. That way if there are any lumps or anything that's cooked, any bits of cooked egg in the pudding, we're gonna catch them in our strainer so we have a perfectly smooth vanilla pudding. Once 20 minutes has passed, you're going to want to cover the surface of your pudding with either plastic wrap or a piece of parchment paper. Now, you wanna do this to keep the skin from forming, and then you're going to let this pudding sit at room temperature until it's cooled to room temperature before transferring it to the fridge. Once in the fridge, you're going to want to let it cool for several hours before enjoying. Once your pudding has chilled completely, we can go ahead and dig in. And that is how easy it is to make homemade vanilla pudding completely from scratch. 
so much better than anything you're going to get pre-made at the grocery store. I hope you guys enjoyed today's sweet, simple, and from scratch recipe. And if you try this one out, I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Mm. So good. Hey, if you guys enjoyed today's vanilla pudding recipe, I would really appreciate it. If you would give me a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also, if you enjoyed today's recipe video, here are a few others you might like as well.